Hi, everybody. God bless you. I hope you're having a fantastic Monday. I just wanted to um, get on here and talk to you a little bit about what the Lord spoke to me on a Saturday in Virginia. Um, I was in Virginia for the weekend for a women's conference called Dwell and then ministered at their church. And on that Saturday, while I was there at the Airbnb, the Lord spoke to me as clear as a bell and he said, reset. That's all he said. Now, when he said it, I immediately had a knowing that it was for me personally. And now again, anytime um, the Lord speaks to me, I don't assume it's a word, even if it's rebuking, especially if it's rebuking, that it's given to me for everybody else. I always look at my own self and I always examine my own heart because I cried out to him so many 12 years ago and I said you know I want to know you and that's still my heart that's still my trumpet that I don't want to be a minister that gets a word that gets a message and and thinks it's everybody else I'm I'm that person that says Lord change me I'm the problem I want to know you and so with that being said when I heard the word reset there, I, I prophetically felt a two that it was two ways. It was a natural and also in the spirit. Now, um, I'm married to a personal trainer. I'm married to someone who understands micronutrients, the value of drinking water. We have he has his own gym. Like honestly, guys, <laughs> I have no excuse, and yet I've been his worst client and I have and this is me talking about me there have been lots of times that I have just out of exhaustion being lazy too busy on the road I've made many excuses why I can't follow his program or eat better or whatever you know and so um I have just kind of I'm a, I'm a grazer. I kind of graze. Um, I'm not food motivated. And so it, it you know, it's, there's, there's not something that normally if I'm craving something, it's normally true you're, it's because my body's needing it. My problem is I like to, I'm a junker. I, I, my husband will tell me, Ronna, you're 50 years old. You cannot eat like you were a teenager. Put that candy down, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And so when he said the word reset, my natural brain went to, you know what? I need to reset. And I immediately had a knowing that I needed to drink more water and I needed to put lemon in it. I just, you know, we, there's always good benefits of lemon, right? But I wanted to have lemon in it. And I wanted, hear me, I immediately, after I had this thought, I immediately started craving carrot and apple juice like like juicing carrot and apple juice and so anyway guess what I did I came home and I had I was only home three or four days and then it was time to go to Iowa and then I came home and as soon as I got home I had pastors come here and then when they left I then had family it was just constantly people in and out in and out in and out in and out and so I just continue to make excuses of not going on this reset. It never, on my natural reset, um, I felt, I'm not one to say, okay, I think I'm going to fast. I, when I fast, when Ronna Harrison fast, I know the Lord has called me to it. He's like, he's telling me, okay, you're just going to fast. And so, and when that happens, guys, I can fast for days and days and days. Like, it's just, I can. It's just like there's an anointing that comes over me and I could just do it. But I knew it wasn't that either. I knew that he was pulling out of me to be more on purpose, to be more disciplined. Can I say it? To care, to care more. You know, I'm 50. It's not old, but I'm not young. 
but most importantly, I still have a, I have one grown child and then I have a, I still have a, a child at home. I have a 12 year old home, but even more so than that, I want to be around for them, but I have a call on my life and I have, I have things in my spirit. I still want to know, and I still want to be transformed by, and I still want to, I haven't bore fruit in every area of my life. And that's so important to me. You know, my trumpet is when we stand before him, when I stand before Christ, I don't want him to see Ronna Harrison. I want him to see himself and really it's passion in me. So all of this tug of war that's going on inside of me is really what I've asked the Lord for. I've asked him, I, I have told him I want to be on purpose and I want to change and I want to be healthy and I want to be more vibrant and I want to be fruitful and I want to love people and I want to be long suffering and 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 kind and lovely and self control <laughs> self control yes that kind of thing so with all these people coming in and out of the house and all these things happening I kept feeling him I kept reminding myself of when he said the word reset and I also began to pray in the spirit every day. I, no matter what I was doing, no matter who was around me, I began, even in my heart, I began to pray in the spirit and seek the Lord on this word. Now, if you were to just, I'm just going to read to you um, basically when I think of the word reset, I'm getting ready to read to you um, here in just a second. I think of rebooting. You know, sometimes with our cell phones, sometimes with our computers, we have to re reboot. <laughs> That's hard to say. My Texas tongue is not allowing me. Um, we have to to do that in order for everything to update and to um, start again. Um, a let me let me give you a reset definition just a natural reset definition it means to to begin again to start again the biblical definition oh i was just on it that's the scripture is no longer hear me depending on your own strength no longer depending on your own strength but instead bringing your needs and concerns before the loving hands of Jesus, who is willing to take your burdens and teach you a new way of life. We're in a habit of casting our cares on people, on situations, on social media, casting those cares. And we're, we're wanting things some people have called it a microwave society where we want it, we want what we want, we want it now. And we don't want to work and, and to grow and to learn. It's 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 not your flesh is never in agreement of being crucified. It's just not going to be. It's gonna fight you tooth and toenail over that. It's gonna your mind is you're going to feel tired. Have you ever went through this phase where you said, well, I'm going to read my Bible more. And then every time you get to read your Bible, you get sleepy. <laughs> because there was a spirit of, of a weariness. There could be a spirit of slumber. The Bible talks about these things. A spirit of slumber comes over you. And before long, you're getting sleepy every time you read your Bible. Now, you can be on Facebook eight hours a day, or you can watch YouTube videos, or you can watch movies, or you can do whatever else you want for hours a day. But the minute you go to try to research and study your Bible, you start to get tired. How do I know all this? Because I'm guilty of it. I have found that there has been a spirit of slumber at times that has come and tried to rob me of my time of reading the word of God. Also, <clears throat> there's a <clears throat> excuse me, a spirit of distraction that comes. Sometimes when you you got a thought or you have the Lord spoke to your word or the Lord has given you something, you allow 10 things around you to get in the way and before long 
what he spoke to you or the thought he gave you, the word or the scripture he gave you is no longer burning in your mind because all these other things um, began to jump ahead of it. And we don't act. There's so many times I caught in, in my own life a few years, especially in my 20s. The, the prophetic was strong in my 20s, just as it is now. And the Lord would speak to me or say something to me. And I would just, you know, I would be mindful of it. But then I would just go about my own business. <laughs> Listen, and that is a, that's disobedience. That is disobedience. And it may not have been a word for me to go do something, but maybe I was supposed to stop and pray over it. Maybe I was supposed to prophesy and send the word out over situations. Um, you don't know how many times I would have a knowing or I would have something happen and then two or three days would go by and I didn't do anything about it. And then there it was. And I would think, man, I knew that. I should have been more mindful of that thing. This reset that I feel like the Lord is speaking about is to be, and you hear me say this all the time, is to be on purpose. There are disciplinary actions each one of us need to take. The reason why we're not seeing the full benefits of His Word tangible in our life is because We've allowed habits and thoughts and imaginations and feelings and people and surroundings and money and jobs. And we've allowed life. We've allowed life to come in and stand at the forefront of our minds, of our soulless realm. And we've allowed things to become more important than seeking him. Now, people think because they spend time in prayer and they read their Bible, they're seeking Him. You know, if we're supposed to seek the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and with all your soul, we need to know exactly what that means and how to do that. Because what we're trying to attain is not things from Him. He's already given us what we need. But we're trying to become like Him. So there's a mindset. That, that needs to be a reset right there. If we're doing things in our Christian walk, everyday walk, so that we can get things from Him, then we need a reset. We're not trying to get things from Him. He has already given you every good gift according to the Word. You are, are, you are saved. You are delivered. You are healed. He said, forget not my benefits. He is your provision. He is your peace. He's already, he's already offered everything He is going to be. So we're not trying to get things from Him, but we're trying to become like Him. And the reason why we're trying to become like Him is because when we become like Him, that righteousness, that right thinking, that right speaking, that right believing, when we become like that, then those things that He is manifest. Then they begin to manifest. But we, we've somehow gotten more used to, well, this ain't working out. That's not working out. She's sick. We're broke. Blah, blah, blah. And then we just say, well, that, well the devil's just fighting me. Mm -mm. <clears throat> devil, the devil probably hasn't been around you. <laughs> he don't, he's like, I don't even need to go over there. She's taking care of it by herself because of the way she believes. So we need a reset. We need to stop the old and step into what he has for us, but not just body, but body, mind, and soul. We need to come in agreement. We are threefold nature, and our threefold nature needs to have a reset so that we can come in alignment and become one with the threefold nature he is. I'm telling you guys, this type of reset will open up the windows of heaven and pour on you such a blessing in which you have no room. You don't have, you just can't imagine, right? I'm trying to look here to see. So I, I wanted to, I wanted to read to you. And Isaiah 43, 19 says, Behold, I am going to do a new thing. And in this season, of divine reset. God is doing something we have never seen. God is doing, he's moving, he's he's 
always. And let me tell you why. Because he's a creator. So if he thinks it, if he speaks it, it, it forms. He is creator. He, he is always moving. He's always working it out for your good. Always. And so I'm not done with this word. I'm going to be real. I'm not done. I'm still, I'm still studying. I'm still thinking. I'm still meditating. And I'm still prophetically searching my heart every moment of every day. And I want to know the fullness of what he means by this reset. I believe that we're being set up so that we can be fully armed and ready for whatever comes our way. Not only in the natural, with our bodies, with our finances, uh, with the world around us. Um, making decisions. Um, everything around us. We're going to need to step into who He is and have an understanding of His Word in order to move forward. I don't think that we can walk through these perilous days without communion and without having this reset. And so I'm going to go a little bit deeper. So be looking for some more videos as we, we as the Lord allows to, to find some things that's going to change. Let me give you an example before I let you go. And then people say, we're living like into the days of Noah. And you look back at the days of Noah, the world had gotten so corrupt that Father God did a reset. He did a reset. He told Noah, he said, listen, this is your instructions. I'm calling you to do this. These Build this boat, use this wood, get your family, get these animals. And he caused the flood. He reset. He did a reset. And so Jesus, when he sent Jesus to this earth to become the spotless, most perfect sacrifice so that there would be a redemption for our sins, that was a reset. That was a reset. I just feel prophetically that there is, we need to position ourselves that when the world goes through this see this this shifting and that word don't let it go over your head right don't get desensitized when the shifting happens people may call it a shaking that you dwell you continue to exist you still remain in him why because you your 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 reset was an alignment with what he is doing. Can you imagine if Noah had his own idea when God was trying to reset, right? If Noah would have had his good idea instead of his God idea, they would have all drowned. <laughs> None of us would be here. See how important it is, right? So we need to be in alignment. How do we do that? Communion. Come on, we've already talked about this. Communion keeps your spiritual eyes open. Communion keeps your spiritual ears open. So when God is moving, we move with Him. And prophetically speaking, He is doing a spiritual reset. Amen. So I just wanted to share that with you. I hope you have a fantastic day. God bless you. Listen, I'm excited. We're going to Kansas. We're going to Wichita, Kansas. If you want more information, listen, if you, you want to travel, come travel. Come be come be with us. Fly in, bus in, try get some girlfriends together, come in, get some get some church folk together. It's not a women's conference. Everybody's welcome. And come in. We have some wonderful services in Wichita, Kansas there at Christian Chapel Foursquare. And so anyway, information about that is on our Facebook page, Harrison Ministries International. Guys, thank you so much. If you haven't already subscribed to the Harrison Ministries channel, do that. Be sure and click that bell, all right, so that you'll be notified when there's a new video. All those that are partners with us, thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh, especially these last few weeks. It's been such a blessing. I've needed you. I needed your prayer and I needed you to push us on down the road. So thank you so much for that. All right. Talk to you later. God bless. Bye-bye.